First of all, this mind of ours is extraordinary. This mind. But how we mind the mind. A lot of time we've gone off. Not gone off the mind, gone too much into the mind, into thoughts, emotions, and stories. So their mind, in one way, as the great Dzogchen master, first human Dzogchen master called Garab Doji, he said that mind is and has always been the Buddha. I mean, it's amazing. Mind is and has always been Buddha. If you understand the mind and in its true nature, it is the Buddha. But yet at the same time, our mind is obscured by ignorance and negative emotions and all these obscurations of habitual, cognitive, emotional, obscures it. And so therefore, it's like almost it's been um, sabotaged. Or rather, a um, real nature mind is really imprisoned in the delusion of an ordinary mind. We need to let it free and release it. Clear? Clear? So first what you do, you'll allow your mind to just settle in a state of calm abiding. Quietly settle, spaciously. Quite a lot of mind to settle. Through meditation. You can just by being spacious. Allowing the mind to settle. In a natural way. If you can manage that. Is the best. Through the blessing of these great masters, who are really the Buddha in the flesh, the real, the great blessing for me is that I'm extraordinarily grateful for, to them for showing me the true nature of mind, seeing, showing me that mind is and has always been the Buddha. In the Dzogchen way, so there's, there's nothing to seek. There's nothing to find. If you really realize that it's all present. In fact, something is inspiring. A close student of mine she was suddenly told by the doctors that she had stage four cancer. She said that when she heard, you know, it was a little bit of a shock, but it was not like, you know, your stage one, there's some hope, stage four, this is it. And what was her reaction? 
She had a little bit of a shock at the beginning. But the amazing thing is, she said, this was very moving. She said, all hope and fear dissolved. All hope and fear dissolved. And she's experienced a tremendous sense of contentment. And incredible gratitude to me and to the teachings. Incredible gratitude to the Lama and to the teachings. Incredible gratitude. Her only wish, wish or dying wish was that how wish more people will receive these teachings, you know. Because there are so many people who do not have the teachings. They're lonely, they're suffering. And how wish, you know, she kept saying to me when she first heard of the news on the phone to me, how I wish more people can receive these teachings. She kept saying that. And I was really, that was very, very, very profound because it, what does it show that the, all the teachings she has had, you know, maybe she was not a kind of a practitioner who did a lot of sadhanas, with a lot of, you know, retreats, personal retreats, but she had a lot of devotion. She followed the teaching, took it seriously, and really change her attitude. And so, really, it's a sign of Dhamma has entered into her. When you can say, when you can say, if you're suddenly struck with stage four cancer, will you be able to say all hope and fear? You might be, if you reach to that level. But until then, you had a lot of questions. Yeah. If suddenly you can say that all hope and fear dissolve, there's a tremendous sense of contentment and tremendous gratitude. That's really saying a lot to have found that. That's amazing, isn't it? Wonderful. So when the Dharma really enters into you, then the mark of that realization comes when you're facing death like that. Then you have that attitude. So, so she had done chemotherapy, but chemotherapy normally makes you more and more sick, but she began to, because of her attitude, really attitude, attitude, attitude. She was always positive. Mind is the root of everything. Mind is the forerunner of everything. If you work with the mind, can transform, it can do miracles. Is that clear? But what is exciting that you have a mind. You know, you have a mind, by the way. You know that? And you can work with that. You have also the mind that is the Buddha. You have a choice whether you choose the Buddha mind or the samsara mind. It's the wonderful thing that we have a mind. Most important then, most important in the mind is the awareness. Awareness. <coughs> the cognizance. The clarity. Nature of mind isn't that. It's the awareness free of grasping. Pure and pristine awareness that pervasive like the ocean or like the sky. <coughs> 